netting fish under the ice of rivers and lakes is one of the oldest and most successful methods of obtaining fresh fish during the winter months. Unfortunately, the art of setting nets at this time of year is gradually becoming a lost art and practice. Norman Wesley, Indian Education Coordinator for the Ojibwe and Cree Cultural Center in Timmins recognized this and decided to have the process recorded. To do the actual setting of the nets, Norm chose Michael Patrick, an elder from Winisk on the coast of James Bay. The idea is to put a net in a river or lake at a pre-selected site where two long poles can be anchored into the bottom. Each end of the net is then tied to an anchor pole, and any fish which swim into the net are trapped by their gills. The net is pulled out after a day or so and the fish removed. It can then be left out or put back in to catch more fish. The site chosen for the net was on the ice of the Metogamy Lake on the Metogamy Indian Reserve, which is located about 60 miles south of Timmins. It's about an hour's drive from Timmins to the reserve by car. Once there, all the equipment was transferred into a sled pulled by a snowmobile for the trip out. The first stop was to cut all the poles needed for the job. Three thin trees, about 18 feet tall, had to be cut. The first two would anchor the two ends of the net, and the third would provide a method to pass the net under the ice. While Norm was cutting these, Michael was busy cutting down a stout tree from which he hacked off a piece about three and a half feet long. He then tapered one end to a point. After cutting a small wedge, he drove it into the first piece to split the tapered part into a fork. This was secured with a couple of nails. Back out at the trail, the long poles were lashed together and tied to the skidoo for the trip out onto the ice. Once out at the site, the poles were trimmed and cut to size. Tying a thin rope to this fork, Michael carried it out from the skidoo in the direction that the net would run. Using his arms as a measure, he then walked back from the fork to the exact length of his net. The line this rope formed from the forked stick in the foreground marked the exact run that the net would take. The other end of the net was marked by this hooked stick, and here the first hole was cut through the ice. Now the third long pole came into use. It was laid on the ice along the rope that marked the net line. A second hole was opened in the ice, the length of this pole from the first cut. This process was repeated until there was a series of holes along the net line, all spaced the same distance apart as the length of the pole. Now, one end of the rope was tied to this pole and it was passed under the ice from hole to hole to the far end of the net run, as if a huge needle had been used. This difficult task was accomplished by using the forked stick to steer and push the long pole along under the ice. As the front end of the pole appeared at each hole, it was held with the hooked stick until the forked one was moved up to this point. Once the rope was under the ice, it was a simple job to feed the net under by pulling it along with the rope. It was then tied to the anchor poles at each end. The work of setting the net was now complete. The holes were filled with snow, and the poles sticking up at each end were tied and braced to steady them. With the wind up and the temperature about 20 below, the drive back to Timmins was a welcome chance to thaw out.
Next morning, things had brightened up a lot. The sun was out, and the wind had died somewhat. Since there hadn't been a lot of snow on the ice, Michael and Norm chose to walk the mile or so out to the net. They pulled along a toboggan with their tools on it. With the walk completed, Michael started getting the net out. Then, when the braces were off the pole, Norm used an ice chisel to reopen the hole. Michael built a frame that would serve as a windbreak. The hole had to be free of slush when the net was being pulled out. So Norm cleaned this out and Michael started on the other end. Only a couple of inches of ice had formed overnight, so it was a simple task to reopen the holes. At the far end, Norm lifted the pole while Michael untied the net. Then. He tied a long rope to that end of the net. They could then begin removing it from the other end. As they pulled the net out, the string was pulled into the water so that when all the fish net was out of the water, it could be pulled back under the ice to make another day's catch. It wasn't long till the first fish appeared. The net catches firmly in the fish's gills, so it takes considerable effort and skill to get them free, especially if they're still alive and kicking. A particularly troublesome fish can quickly be killed by breaking its neck, but with the numbing cold on wet hands, none were very easy to remove. When the last fish was out of the water, the net was straightened out, and then it was lowered back in. This was done by one person pulling on the rope end while someone else was feeding the net back into the main hole. Finally, the net was secured back onto the two anchor poles and braced. The catch was wrapped and tied in the toboggan along with the tools. Michael and Norman arrived back at the reserve with more fish than either of them could carry. Some of them were given to members of the community as payment for use of the snowmobile and some of the tools. This brought forth a number of offers to empty the net for Michael. It was several weeks before he finally removed his net from the lake. In that time, the people at Metogamy enjoyed fresh fish on their tables and renewed their appreciation of an old and valuable method of traditional winter fishing. Thank you.